I'm here at the largest version of the Ten Commandments in the world, built into this mountainside. And I'm here because I wanted a big backdrop to talk about the big differences between the original Hebrew version of this list and the modern English version that's kind of become an artifact of pop culture. Those who will not live by the law shall die by the law! I thought I knew the Ten Commandments pretty well. When I was a small boy, my parents paid me a dollar to memorize them, which I guess adjusted for inflation is what, a hundred dollars? <laughs> but then when I lived in an Orthodox Jewish neighborhood for about five years, I was surprised to learn that Judaism has some completely different ideas about this list and the items on it. For starters, they don't call it the Ten Commandments. So this is the book of Shemot or Exodus 20, In Hebrew, this list of 10 items that's delivered by God to Moses is referred to as the Aseret Ha Tevarim, which means the 10 words or the 10 sayings. And this is a more neutral title, and it's one that the ancient Greeks agreed with when they called it the Decalogue, the 10 words, as well as the Latin Vulgate. They called it the Decum Verba, Verba Decum also 10 words. And even in the 1500s, William Tyndale is still calling this list the 10 verses. So the name the 10 commandments is a relatively recent rebranding. And one of the reasons they don't call it the 10 commandments is because they have different items on the list and not all of them are commandments. But tell me what the first statement is or utterance of the Lord. Cause it's not really a commandment. There are 10 utterances or sayings. Okay. If you'll notice from the mountain, in the modern English version, the first item on the list is, you shall have no other gods before me. But that's not the first item on the Hebrew list. If we go back to the story, the first thing that God says to Moses is, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt. So in the original Hebrew version, the first item is, I am the Lord your God, period. Then thou shalt have no other gods before me or make any idols are combined together into item number two. So the way that that first item is just a simple declarative statement is another reason why they don't call it the 10 commandments. The Lord has given unto you these 15. Oy. Now there's also some disagreement about the way that individual commandments should be translated. Like where's thou shalt not steal. Ah, there we go. In English, this commandment is generally interpreted as thou shalt not steal, which is a prohibition against taking people's personal property. But for thousands of years, Hebrew scholars have traditionally translated this commandment as thou shalt not kidnap. When the Torah says in the Ten Commandments, don't steal, does it mean stealing or kidnapping? It actually means kidnapping. And although these two acts are related, stealing and kidnapping, it's important to note that the traditional Jewish interpretation focuses on the violation of someone's personal boundaries, rather than the more modern concept of property crime, which is essentially about stealing someone's labor. Now there's another item on this list we should talk about if we scroll up a little bit. You should have let him kill me because I'm going to kill you. I'll catch up with you. I don't know when, but I'll catch up. Because one time you'll turn around and I'll be there. I'm gonna kill you, man. So when the builders of this monument were designing it in the 1940s, it looks like they just stuck with the King James lingo for item number six, thou shalt not kill. But this may be another discrepancy in translation. Already more recent English versions have updated this item to thou shalt not murder. In Hebrew, this commandment is just two words long, and it essentially translates to no killing. However, the word that's used for killing there comes from the verb ratzak, which refers to specifically an unethical kind of killing. There's another verb we could use if we wanted to talk about any kind of killing in general, like even swatting a fly. It's worth noting that thou shalt not murder still isn't a perfect translation because our culture has a different idea about what kinds of killing are ethical. For example, the ancient Jewish culture viewed manslaughter as still being a form of murder, even though we might today make a distinction between accidental and purposeful killings. Who did this? Up there! It's him! Up there! So while we like putting up monuments of the Ten Commandments to advertise our cultural and religious background, given that we have completely different items in four out of the 10 slots, 
I think it's fair to ask whether at this point we're even talking about the same document. Now we could also talk about the format of this list. In our culture, we have a lot of assumptions and lore about how this list should look. You know, we have these medium light gray tablets with the rounded tops, and these don't always match the way that Judaism has historically presented it. For example, in Exodus, we do read that there were two stone tablets, and the way that this is typically depicted in Western art is that there's five commandments on this side and five on this one. But in Jewish tradition, they say that the tablets were actually duplicates. In his book Exploring Exodus, Bible scholar Nahum Sarna writes about how in ancient Mesopotamia, when a lord was trying to make an agreement with a group of vassals, they would carve all the terms of the agreement onto one stone tablet, like, thou shalt give me X percent of thy crops. And then the king would hold on to that copy back at court. Meanwhile, the vassals would make a second duplicate copy to hold on to in their town square. That way, each party in the transaction would have a complete copy of the document. Blasphemers, idolaters, for this you shall drink bitter waters. Complicating things a bit further, Exodus 32 actually mentions that the tablets had writing on the front side and on the back, which is either a detail that's just been lost to time or, you know, it would just be difficult to carve on both sides of a mountain. Although I guess you could rework this part of the monument to display that feature. You know, if this whole thing swiveled, you could put some commandments on the front, turn it around, put some on the back, and then just make that a duplicate tablet over there. All good. But uh, if that was the case, which commandments would you put on the front and which would you put on the back? Growing up, the way I heard it was that the first four have to do with having a relationship with God, and the last six have to do with having a relationship with other people. But in Jewish tradition, they actually say that there's a different structure to the list. Then we have five on this side, five on this side, but it says in the Midrashim that they would actually fold in on each other. You could fold them together, and they could face each other. So one, so to speak, corresponds to six, there's a relationship between two and seven, a relationship between three and eight, four and nine, five and ten. So we know from the story that the tablets were inscribed on the front and the back. And according to the Zohar, a mystical Jewish text, when God was writing the Ten Commandments, he didn't write on the front and then on the back. He actually used his finger to write all the way through the stone tablet so that at the same time he was writing on the front, I am the Lord your God, he was simultaneously writing on the back, thou shalt not kill. That's an interesting thought. What is recognizing that Hashem is your God and not killing? What do they have in common? Let's see, what could be the first ingredient in a relationship? I think the first step is to recognize that the other exists outside of you. And therefore, I'm going to love you for who you are and not just for what you bring me. Real love means that you recognize the other exists outside of you. If you'd like to hear more about the connections between all five pairs on the list, let me know. I think that would make a really good follow-up video. In the meanwhile, it looks like there's a replica of Jesus' tomb over here that we should totally check out, but that's for another video. So, I'll see you next time. Those